Topi. Everybody a Topi. I'm most pleased to be seeing the Topi at this stage of the morning, mostly because it is doing a very clever thing. And what it's doing, of course, is standing upon a termite mound in order to give advantage to look this way towards us and away in front of us where, well, perhaps there's some lions lurking around the place. In fact, it now seems to be sniffing at the possibility of termites for breakfast, which is, of course, unusual, and as little as I do know about topi, I do know, of course, that they are not, in fact, termite eaters by default. In fact, they are, well, grazers and ruminants. Now the topi has got an itchy chin. Now, if we pan slowly to the left, I will show you just quickly, way in the distance, got nothing to do with wildlife, but it does have to do with one of the things that makes the Mara so very exciting to many people. Under that tree, the big tree... No, 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 stop, back right a little. Right a little. Yes, those three trees, if you... Oh, sorry, I'm completely wrong. Senzo, you were absolutely right. There you are. Yep, bang in there. Straight there. Zoom. And a little bit right, you can see a little bit of white. No, to the right, to the right. You can see a little bit of white there underneath a tree. That is a group of guests there. You can see them wandering around. You may say to yourself, good heavens, there seem to be people wandering around willy-nilly in the Maasai Mara. How are they doing that? Well, they're not, in fact. They were landed there by a balloon that took off uh, at, well, what time did it take off? must have taken off probably at about ooh, 6.10 or so. And, well, we're going to be doing some views from the balloon fairly soon. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. Hopefully I'll be able to do it. I'll certainly be able to narrate it to you as we do it. I'm not sure when we're going to do it first, but we'll keep you posted on that. Now, James, you want to know if there's anything that I've not seen here that I would like to see here. Sorry, I'm just a bit distracted because the topi are now running at high speed. They don't appear to be being chased, and the sesame, of course, which is what a topi is, are apparently the fastest antelope that there are. This one is doing a very gentle jog at the moment. James, uh, well, I saw one of the things that I was hoping to see early this morning. We saw a hartebeest, which I had not seen last time I was here. Uh, James, I would like to see a cheetah here. I know it's a little bit banal, given that, uh, you know, cheetah are common in this area, apparently. But I didn't see a cheetah last time we were here, and it's interesting. We don't really know why that was, but perhaps to say that it could be because the herds were here, and therefore the lions were, well, perhaps in greater profusion. There were certainly some nomadic lions that follow the herds in, but I think there was a lot more lion activity when I was last here. And Brent's already had two, one successful, one unsuccessful cheetah kill. And I think he's actually seen a few more that haven't been on camera. And so I'm hoping to spend a bit of time with some cheetah around here over the next little while. Good. Well, that's it for this particular topi sighting. I think we'll move on and see what else we can see down the way. Most impressed with the Incahumas for their efforts today, killing a zebra. The zebras, of course, of the greater Kruger National Park are very unimpressed with the efforts of the Incahumas. No, Carol, you're absolutely correct. You say the termite mounds here don't look quite as high as the ones in South Africa. They aren't. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's the same species of termite. I think it is. Uh, the large fungus growing termite, I think, is the only termite that builds mounds of this style. But the soil is very different, Carol, and I think that's probably why the mounds look so very different. really is rather magnificent driving through these plains of red oat grass or Thamida triandra, which I've pointed out to you many times on the bush walks. And I've said to you that this is what draws all of those wildebeest up here when the rains do come. Well, they have come. 
And what's interesting to me though is that this grass has already gone to seed. Sorry Kirsten, I've missed you. Try that again. Oh, here we go. Husband Sparkles, we have a question coming from you that sounded to me as follows. Would you can cheek it's about not I'm not sure what that means, so I'm going to ask for it again while we look at what I think is a rufous naped lock. Oh, when can we start to expect to see night drives in the morrow? That is n not a rufous naped lock. It looks like a cysticula of some description, possibly a rattling one. Um, Fuzzman Sparkles, I'm not sure yet. We are still. Uh, trying various things out at the moment, um, figuring a few things here and there. But certainly we will keep you posted and there will be night drives and we have all of the equipment required to do it. It's just a question of getting that equipment onto the vehicles and then making that equipment talk to you. Righty, we're going to carry on from here. Ali is, uh, well, they're actually on fire, the Tristan and Ali couple. Uh, we've had lions, we've had buffalo, and now you're going to have elephant. Found a very beautiful setting. That's what we found. So we've got.